Let's have a look, see. Welcome back to the bliss of the abyss, where we are getting a bit political today. Streaming, come and find me live on Twitch if you want. Not a regular podcast today, and I am watching the opening of Parliament and all of the ridiculous pomp and ceremony that comes with it. Um, right now there are people with horses and a carriage. Looks like someone might be in the carriage. Uh, I might have to watch some of this on double speed because the pageantry is just that silly. Enter into the building they come wearing their big pointy hats with their fluffy doilies hanging down the back. Lovely horse tails as well. Doing live commentary. Um, Anyway, how's it going, everybody? Welcome. Welcome, 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 one and all. Um, How are you doing on this fine afternoon? It is Wednesday where I am. Um, Oh. Can you hear that noise? I don't know what's making that noise. Hold on. I found it. There we go. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, we're um, having a bit of a political one today. We're going to talk about the opening of Parliament because this is the first chance for us to see this new government. Uh, for those who don't know how the UK system works, it's a bit like the US system on opening day when the president comes in and announces a whole new raft of measures and signs a load of executive orders. It's a little bit like that. It's not quite the same as that because what happens in the UK is the government uh, announces a bunch of bills that they intend to pass through Parliament, but they do this through the king who, in reality, has no option but to say, yes, of course. Um, And that's quite funny anyway, because it's uh, all the pomp and circumstance of of royalty without any of the power that a monarch would normally have had. but that's what we're doing here today. We're gonna we're gonna go through these acts and see see what's happening. Um, I'm gonna have to watch this uh, on much faster than normal speed because, quite frankly, let's get let's see how fast YouTube goes these days. Two is that it? Oh look, horses go a lot faster now. Much better. Uh, the king is now in his golden chariot, being whisked. To the palace. There he is, wearing a big old hat. There's his wife. Is she the queen or the queen elect? How does it work? Queen consort. There's all these kind of weird little ins and outs uh, that uh, don't really make sense anymore. Um, but, uh, but there they are, forevermore, no doubt. Um, So the horse is now going a lot faster than they would be able to in real life. <laughs> you sure? I should watch all of these things on, on double speed. So on, on he goes, down what they call the Mall in London. So he goes from Buckingham Palace. There's so many gods. Look, the thing is completely lined with not only King's, uh, King's guards, but also policemen uh, and also cavalry. And yes, they are wearing the big old hats and they are marching in a silly way. Don't worry. All of that's happening. Down they come. And uh, not moving incredibly fast, it must be said. Um, But the arrival in Parliament is something to see. Um, So Parliament is absolutely rammed full um, of people wearing all of their red coats for the special occasion. That's what the, um, that's what the Americans call it. The red coats in the uh, War of Independence. And there they are still wearing them. Not in battle, of course. Back then, it used to be. Silly idea to wear red in battle. It makes it very easy to spot you. Anyway, a lot of um, important 
people have packed out um, Parliament uh, so that we can see a state opening. Um, and there is the throne from which the king will read out his prepared speech. Remember, nothing has been written by him. That's not how it works. So we have such a weird democracy. Basically, he is told what to say and he says it and then we try and make it become law. Nothing he says right now will become law at the drop of a hat. It's simply not how it works. There's people wearing tiaras. Lots of people wearing the uh, wigs, powdered wigs. Do they still use powder? Um, do they still use powder? I don't know. Do they still powder wigs? I think the reason they powdered wigs was because of lice. <laughs> so you'd have to imagine. I think the reason they wore wigs was because of lice. Um, the rise and fall of the powdered wigs. People now powder one's natural hair. No. Uh, some judges wear them, magistrates haven't worn them for a long time, district judges don't. They are made of horses hair, they're no longer required in the Supreme Court, but they are a requirement for criminal trials in the UK. Got to still wear your wigs, ladies and gents. Um, there's some kind of delay while everyone kind of chitter chatters. Uh, so let's fast forward through all of this till we get to the real pomp and circumstance of the ceremony. Chuntering away. Oh, the hush has descended, maybe? Hard to know. No, a hush. You know when you're in an event and a hush a hush descends, but then uh, you realise, actually, no, no, turns out nothing was going on. And then the hush resends. Resends? Rescinds. Re re reasserts itself. Rescinds. Re re-rises. Resurrects, maybe. I don't know. Let's try and get to actually what happens. Because uh, I want to see what kind of laws this government are going to try and pass. This is rather important uh, for my international listeners who don't follow UK politics. We have had 14 years of conservative rule, although f four of them, I believe, or maybe five, were in coalition. Uh, but that did very little to stop very conservative and right-wing policies becoming the rule du jour of the country. Okay, it looks like something's going to happen. But so now we have a um, now we have a left-wing government, or at least a centrist government. Um, but it's certainly left of centre. And here we go. There's the king walking in, wearing a lovely dress, carried by two lovely young chips. Um, wearing ridiculous outfits they look like they're all frozen in time uh, you can see why the Americans got rid of this but then again the Supreme Court just brought it back so um, King and <coughs> Queen Consort are now sat down I hope she is the Queen Consort I'm not insulting Camilla by saying something that's incorrect um, but I believe she is I don't know maybe she is the Queen who knows functionally it doesn't really matter the king has now sat down. Everybody's waiting. Let's see what he's got to say. My lords, pray be seated. 1.25 speed. <laughs> he's just told the lords to sit down. There's hours of lords, by the way. That's why there's so many judges. Packed, standing room only. Right, let's hear this. Come on, what have you got to say? What is this country going to do next? Can we have some sensible left-wing politics, please? Or will we go back to austerity? Ah, perish the thought. More austerity, more death. God, this is a long pregnant pause, even at 1.25 speed. Let's get up to two speed and see when he starts talking. My lords, please be seated. He's frozen. He's buffering. Charles, you're buffering. Quit buffering, sir. 
Uh, Twitch.tv slash Ruskin Denmark. I don't I don't stream very often, so I don't really promote it that often. But um, for certain occasions like this, where they're doing it live. Oh, someone's carrying a scepter away. Someone's carrying some kind of sword away. Ah, uh, here we go. This is now the Houses of Commons. Houses of Commons are now emptying out. This is where all the um, elected officials are. Again, for my American and international listeners, these are these are the only elected officials. The ones in the House of Lords are installed in some way or another. And there are some leftover hereditaries as well. But um, weirdly, they are given <laughs> favour over the elected officials in some way. Oh, let's not get to the ins and outs of how the bicameral system works here and the differences between here and the USA. What is the difference? What is the point in the difference? Anyway, um, there they all are. They're all trying to get in. And in they come, into the Lords. Uh, where do they filter into? I've never actually watched the state opening of Parliament before. Where do they have to stand? Oh, so I can't even see. Oh, there's Kit Starmer. There's Rishi Sunak. So there, <laughs> right at the back, <laughs> given least imports. Okay, now here's this man standing, bowing. Let's take it down to lower speed. He bows, he kneels, he hands him a piece of paper. He's holding a carpet and he's wearing a wig. We're on. He bows, he leaves. Charles has the My paper. lords and members of the House of Commons, my government will govern in service to the country. My government's legislative programme will be mission-led and based upon the principles of security, fairness and opportunity for all. Stability will be the cornerstone of my government's economic policy and every decision will be consistent with its fiscal rules. It will legislate to ensure that all significant tax and spending changes are subject to an independent assessment by the Office for Budget Responsibility. Bills will be brought forward to strengthen audit and corporate governance alongside pension investment. Securing economic growth will be a fundamental mission. My government will seek a new partnership with both business and working people and help the country move on from the recent cost of living challenges by prioritising wealth creation for all communities. My ministers will establish an industrial strategy council. It is my government's objective to see rising living standards in all nations and regions in the United Kingdom. My ministers will get Britain building, including through planning reform, as they seek to accelerate the delivery of high quality infrastructure and housing. They will also pursue sustainable growth by encouraging investment in industry, skills and new technologies. My government is committed to making work pay and will legislate to introduce a new deal for working people to ban exploitative practices and enhance employment rights. It will seek to establish the appropriate legislation to place requirements on those working to develop the most powerful artificial intelligence models. My government believes that greater devolution of decision making is at the heart of a modern dynamic economy and is a key driver of economic growth. And my ministers will introduce an English devolution bill. Legislation will be introduced to give new powers to metro mayors and combined authorities. This will support local growth plans that bring economic benefit to communities. That sounds good. A bill will be introduced More to allow local Scotland. leaders to take control of their local bus services. My ministers will bring forward legislation to improve the railways by reforming rail franchising, establishing Great British Railways and bringing train operators into public ownership. Great. Taken together, these policies will enhance Britain's position as a leading industrial nation and enable the country to take advantage of new opportunities that can promote growth and wealth creation. My government recognises the urgency of the global climate challenge and the new job opportunities that can come from leading the development of the technologies of the future. It is committed to a clean energy transition which will lower energy bills for consumers over time. A bill will be introduced to set up Great British Energy, yes. a publicly owned clean power company headquartered in Scotland, yes. which will help accelerate investment in renewable energy 
such as offshore wind. Yes. Legislation will be brought forward to help the country achieve energy independence and unlock investment in energy infrastructure. Perfect. This A bill will be introduced to support sustainable aviation fuel production. Okay. Well. My government recognizes the need to improve water quality and a bill yes. will be introduced to strengthen the powers of the water regulator. Thank God, stop pumping sewage into our waters. My government will seek to strengthen the border and make streets safer. A bill will be How introduced to modernize the asylum and immigration system, establishing a new border security command and delivering enhanced counter-terror powers to tackle organized immigration crime. Legislation will be brought forward to strengthen community policing, give the police greater powers to deal with antisocial behavior and strengthen support for victims. Measures will be introduced to improve the safety and security of public venues and help keep hours. the British public safe from Four terrorism. Hours of raw My government will bring forward plans to halve violence against women and girls. Million hours of spills, of spills. My ministers will seek raw to raise educational standards rivers, and break down barriers to opportunity. Double the year before. Action will be taken to get people back in employment following the impact of the pandemic. A bill will be introduced to raise standards in education and promote children's well-being. Okay. Generic. Measures will be brought Good. forward to remove the exemption from value-added tax for private school fees, yes. which will enable the funding of six and a half thousand new teachers. Yes. My government will establish Skills England, which will have a new partnership with employers at its heart and my ministers will reform the apprenticeship levy. Okay, good. Legislation will be introduced to give greater rights and protections to people renting their homes, good. Um, including well, ending no-fault evictions we'll it, and right. reforming grounds for possession. Draft legislation will be published on leasehold and commonhold reform. I hope so, because the Tories promised that for... A bill will be introduced TV. to establish an independent football regulator to ensure greater sustainability in the game and strengthen protections for fans. Bye bye, Gareth. My government will improve the National yeah. Health Service as a service for all, okay. providing care on the basis of need, regardless of the ability to pay. Yeah, because we've got eight million. It will seek to reduce the waiting times, stories. focus on prevention, and improve mental health provision for young people. It will ensure mental health is given the same attention and focus as physical health. Yeah. My ministers will legislate to modernise the Mental Health Act so it is fit for the 21st century. A bill will be introduced to progressively increase the age at which people can buy cigarettes and impose limits on the sale and marketing of vapes. Oh, My nice ministers will also legislate to restrict enough. advertising of junk food to children, along with the sale of high caffeine energy drinks to children. Yeah, that stuff's mental. A draft bill will be brought forward to ban conversion practices. My government will take steps to help rebuild trust and foster respect. Legislation will be brought forward to introduce a duty of candour for public servants. A bill will be introduced to establish a statutory armed forces commissioner to act as a strong, independent champion for our gallant armed forces and their families. Legislation on race equality will be published in draft to enshrine the full right to equal pay in law. Okay. My government will strengthen the work, its work with the devolved governments in Scotland, Good. Wales and Northern Ireland Excellent. so that the best outcomes possible are delivered for citizens across the United Kingdom. My ministers will establish a new council of the nations and regions to renew opportunities for the Prime Minister, heads of devolved governments and mayors of combined authorities to collaborate with each other. My government will continue to support the political institutions and devolved government in Northern Ireland. In consultation with all parties, measures will be brought forward to begin the process of repealing and replacing the Northern Ireland Troubles Legacy and Reconciliation Act 2023. Mm, that's a tough one. Measures to modernise the Constitution yeah. will be introduced, like including what? House of Lords reform oh. to remove the rights of hereditary peers to sit and vote in the Lords. Oh, they're going to reform ministers the will strengthen Lords. Woo! Reform the right to vote and sit in the Lords. Well, well, well. That would be interesting. The integrity of elections and encourage wide participation 
in the democratic process. The government will propose a modernization committee of the House of Commons, yeah. which will be tasked with driving up standards, improving work practices, and reforming procedures. My government will ensure a strong defense based on the North Atlantic Treaty Organization's common values of individual liberty, democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. Its commitment to NATO will remain unshakable. Good. It will maintain a strong armed forces, including the nuclear deterrent. To ensure that the United Kingdom's defense capabilities are matched to the changing nature of global strategic threats, my government will conduct a strategic defense review. My government will continue to give its full support to Ukraine and its people, and it will endeavor to play a leading role in providing Ukraine with a clear path to NATO membership. Okay. My government will seek to reset Ooh, the relationship with European good, partners good. and work to improve the United Kingdom's trade and investment relationship with the European Union. My ministers will seek a new security pact to strengthen cooperation on the mutual threats faced by the United Kingdom and the European Union. My government will play its part in trying to secure long-term peace and security in the Middle East. It is committed to a two-state solution with a safe and secure Israel alongside a viable and sovereign Palestinian state. Later this week, Good. my government will host the European political community meeting at Blenheim Palace. The Queen and I look forward to our visit to Samoa alongside the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting okay. in October right. and our visit so, to Australia. Recognition of Palestine, Members of Ukraine, the House of Commons, NATO estimates membership. for the public services will be laid before you. My Lords and members of the House of Commons, other measures will be laid before you. Yeah. I pray that the blessing of Almighty God may rest upon your councils. Okay, and that will be it then. <coughs> so recognition of Palestine. Oh, the, the guy with the uh, carpet and the wig is back. He bows, he wears his carpet in front of him. I wonder what the carpet means. He kneels, he takes it. The king looks very thankful. Well, that was at 1.25 speed, by the way, in case you're wondering how Charles was speaking so fast. Imagine listening to it at one speed. Quite a lot laid out there. Um, and well, the boys are back. They have to pick up his enormous robe, and presumably the king will now leave. Everybody stands. Everybody stands. Everybody stands. Goodbye. Goodbye. Um, and then there's the, what's the what's the rest of this pageantry? Let's get the speed back up to two as we watch all of this. Oh, they're walking out the other door. That's, that's that's nice and symbolic. Come in one side, leave the other. I like the symbolism there. I like that. In one, out the other. In with the out with the old, in with the new. In with the new, out with the old. Whatever. Um, but there go the government. Now, the elected government, of course. There they go, the elected MPs now leaving and the Lord's watching them. I'm back to my commentary. Let's watch them all go. Uh, people with scepters now walking very fast because I've made them go to double speed. And now here they are in the House of Commons. This might be interesting. So they walk now to the House of Commons. And what happens when they come in here? Everyone comes and takes their seat. So they didn't mention the 16-year-old vote stuff. There's Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer having a little laugh. They look like they're buddies now. That's interesting. Um, nothing about AI. Thank God. God, haven't we had enough? We've had enough. Enough about AI. Can everyone stop mentioning AI? Apparently outside there were people uh, demonstrating, not my king, I don't know whose king you think it is, I don't think you really ever think there'll be any kind of 
not key in this country, that would be beyond ridiculous. It just doesn't work that way. Um, I don't know if there's still any more going on with uh, King's Speech. Do they then go to the Houses of Parliament? I don't know. So that was... Um, quite a lot of bills. Let's see if we can get up the full list of them. Uh, 40. Full list of 40 bills in the King's Speech. You might have seen the movie. There was a movie called The King's Speech. Did you see it? You might have seen it. It was a good movie. It had Colin Firth in it. He was doing a thing with his voice a bit like this. He wasn't doing anything like that. <laughs> That's just me being silly. I might have seen the King's speech. Um, I don't think I don't think anything else happens after uh, after that. Um, this will be a government of service. Um, maybe there will be a speech later. Nothing on social care. Nothing on votes for Here we go. Here's, here's the live coverage of it now because I've been watching it on uh, 1.25 speed. Um, let's let's pause that. That's enough of that. How many? Okay, so full list of 40 bills. Gosh, lots and lots and lots. So we're going to own the railways. Bank resolution recapitalization bill. Does that mean? Limit on bankers' bonuses, that would be good. Great British Energy, that would be good. Um, the renters' rights, those poor renters. Oh, they've stolen the tobacco thing. It's quite interesting, isn't it? So um, every year, I think, it's going to go up, the age at which you can buy tobacco. Big tobacco must be furious about this. I heard that the reason it was dropped from Sunak uh, is that big tobacco... If I search big tobacco, am I going to get on some kind of list? Um, pressurized the Sunak government to not put it out in their last little slate of bills before they called the election. Let's let's have a little look. Um, uh, okay, yeah, national security draft bills and then draft bills about uh, some other things. Holocaust memorial bill. Okay, that's interesting. And then devolution, more power to the devolved territories and the mayors. That means Sadiq won't be able to make London even better than it is already. The greatest country in the world. It's its own country, in case you didn't know. And then Ukraine and Gaza uh, revealed how Sunak dropped smoking ban amid lobbying from tobacco firms. Hmm. Rishi Sunak abandoned his legacy policy to ban smoking for future generations amid a backlash from the tobacco industry in the form of legal threats, lobbying and a charm offensive aimed at conservative MPs. An investigation reveals. Uh, so this was The Guardian and The Examination, a non-profit newsroom has uncovered how the UK's largest cigarette companies fought against the policy which would have raised the smoking age by one year every year. After months of fierce opposition, opposition from the industry and intervention from MPs and think tanks with ties to tobacco firms, the proposal was excluded from the wash-up process when outgoing governments chose choose which policies to fast-track and which to drop. It was left out despite MPs having voted in favour of it. Documents and freedom of information requests reveal how four of the world's largest tobacco firms, UK's Imperial Brands, British American Tobacco, Japan Tobacco International, Philip Morris International, put ministers on notice of a legal backlash. They wrote to Health Secretary saying the legislation was unlawful, needed to consider industry views. Government shouldn't form smoking policy without influence from cigarette companies. You surely wouldn't do that, would you? We'll have a judicial review. Um, so I'm guessing the new government are going to face this. Imperial, which sells half of all the cigarettes smoked in the UK, has not filed court proceedings. But a spokesperson said the company was 
keeping the situation under review as we monitor legislative developments. How can you in good conscience work for a tobacco company? Like, it's not like I don't enjoy the occasional bit of tobacco. I, I'm not by any means a smoker. In fact, my father died from tobacco usage. Uh, or maybe abuse would be the better word. I don't know. Heart attack caused by it. But, um... How can you in good conscience work for a company like that? Uh, you know you're pushing it. You know you're... Pu you're not just... No... No tobacco company is pushing just the occasional little roll-up on holiday, which is what I have, basically. They're, they're not doing that, are they? In fact, they used to make doctors advertise their product. Um, and if you've watched any of those documentaries about um, like lobbying, uh, what was the big one about the people who, who are paid to become experts on, on whatever they want? Whatever their their thing is, that sounds very conspiratorial. Um, I'll see if I can find it. Um, uh, pressure groups. It's like they 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 they're spokespeople for all kinds of different pressure groups. Um, I'm going to sound ex exactly um, reused, exactly like a conspiracy theorist, and I don't care. Um, the speech includes a bill explicitly designed to protect Britain from another Liz Truss-style mini-budget. <laughs> the former PM has hit back by posting a statement on social media saying the measures in Labour's legislative programme will expand the power of the state and lead to further economic stagnation. You'd know all about that, wouldn't you, Lizzie? My response to King's speech, says Liz Truss. <clears throat> Starmer King's speech shows Labour has no idea about the change Britain needs. Mm -hmm. What change do we need, Liz? Why don't you tell us? Because in your 46 days in office, which you were beaten by a lettuce, what change did you introduce? So the bad policies include more powers to a failed OBR. But <clears throat> hold on. Oh, it gets good. Oh, it gets good. <clears throat> Reintroducing Stalinist housing targets rather than a zoning system. <clears throat> Sorry, maybe, maybe you thought, maybe you misheard me. Maybe you thought I said Stalinist housing targets. Maybe that's what you thought I said. It is what I said. It is what I said. That is true. <laughs> Uh, but um, but forget her. She's absolutely bonkers, isn't she? Um, Merchants of Doubt is the film I was trying to find before you think I'm losing my mind. I'm not losing my mind. Uh, Merchants of Doubt, a 2014 documentary film traces the use of public relations tactics that were originally developed by the tobacco industry to protect their business from research indicating health risks from smoking. Um, but also, it then goes into other issues. So, for example, manufacturers of flame retardants work to protect their sales after toxic effects of the retardants were reported in the scientific literature. And then there's the ongoing use of these tactics to forestall government action to regulate greenhouse gas emissions in response to the risks of global climate change. There is, it is an incredible documentary um, because there's all these people who are trying to reveal the truth and all these big companies who are pushing out their experts, uh, quote unquote, to sow doubt and disinformation misinformation um and this is uh this is all after the internet has gone totally bonkers on uh the trump assassination attempt um uh well you know fairly fairly so uh, that's a pretty serious thing um 
but it does mean that we're not going to, it seems, learn any more, at least for now, about the Epstein Trump story. Because isn't that isn't that the biggest news ever? You know, all that stuff that was starting to come out about Epstein and Trump. About how Trump was doing loads of stuff with X day and last week social media this is from dailybolder.com don't know who they are last week social media had been buzzing with details of donald trump's association with the late jeffrey epstein the notorious figure embroiled in allegations of pedophilia or pedophilia of course as they say in uh the states i'm going to just look up what the daily boulder is uh so i don't know if i have to take this with a pinch of salt or not um yeah, the Epstein files have been sort of uh, leaked, uh, not fully, but um, we've got multiple plane flights with Epstein, with young girls aboard. These are all in the flight logs, uh, pictures of him with Epstein. Um, noting Trump's name featured prominently 69 times in the released files. However, on Saturday, the narrative took an abrupt turn after a significant event, the assassination on Trump, diverted media attention elsewhere. So it looks like this is, Daily Boulder is just called that because it's from Boulder, Colorado. It's just a newspaper, Boulder, Colorado. I don't know if it leans left or right. I'm just trying to follow its coverage of this. Hello. And here's someone saying, the, me the media is not discussing and is covering up the Epstein files. They're covering up Trump raping 12-year-old girls. Why? I don't know. This is a tweet from Mum of Four Cats. So I'll have to take this with an even bigger pinch of salt. Um, but it does look as if... Yeah, there's some proof of his name on the files. There's a court document saying Trump forced her to engage in a number of horrific things. Uh, Katie Johnson, here's a video of her. What Following the 2019 death of Jeffrey Epstein, more than 20 victims stepped forward to have their day in court. Among them was Anuska de Giorgio, the first British victim to come forward. De Giorgio accused Epstein of grooming and raping her for several years, beginning in her teens. As NBC News reported, in the 1990s, de Giorgio was a teenage model from an affluent family in London. Lured into Jeffrey Epstein's orbit, she was soon being flown to Epstein's properties around the world. The grooming was subtle and persistent. By the time I was being raped it was too late, De Giorgio told NBC. British media also covered her story. The Sun called her a playboy model who had revealed how Epstein's cronies and enablers would turn a blind eye to his brazen abuse of vulnerable young girls. Sky News discussed her acting work, including a role in the 2004 Jude Law film Alfie and her dating history including a 2010 relationship with David Hasselhoff. Oh, Hassel. 2019 was not um, the first time so far, DiGiorgio's so dating life had been of interest to the British but, uh, media. When, when in 1997, the UK's Sunday Mirror reported that the 20-year-old had been introduced to the 51-year-old Donald Trump by Ghislaine, Ghislaine Maxwell. Oh, Soon after, the three flew to Mar-a-Lago okay. for a, quote, happy weekend after which de Giorgio was installed in a Trump apartment in New York City. What? In 2019, despite extensive media coverage of de Giorgio's accusations, journalists failed to reveal that de Giorgio had had a relationship with Trump immediately after her ordeal with Epstein. Given the fact Trump was president at the time, a known associate of Epstein, a frequent attendee at Epstein's sex parties, and a man who himself had been credibly accused of raping a 13-year-old girl at Epstein's New York home in 1994, this journalistic failure is inexcusable. Let's be clear what happened. As a teenager, de Giorgio was groomed and raped by Epstein. At the age of 20, she was passed along to Trump by Epstein accomplice Maxwell, flown to Mar-a-Lago, ensconced in a Trump apartment Trump in New York, and then so presented to the world as Trump's new Epstein. girlfriend. Joining the dots here isn't difficult. When it comes to de Giorgio, there's an Epstein dot, a Maxwell dot, and a Trump dot. How difficult would it have been to connect them? Well, there we go. Um, so I guess uh, 
this is going to be out of the news cycle for a while. So I like covering stuff that no one else is covering. Um, my favorite thing, though, and this was last month. But if you missed it, oh, you're in for a treat. Oh, you are in for a treat if you missed this one. Uh, Trump goes on Fox News. Fox and Friends for a lovely little chat. Um, you know, because the Epstein files were in the news and uh, there's loads of loads of classified would info. You, declassi- you know, so would he would he declassify the 9-11 file? Would you declassify the 9-11 um, files? Yeah. Would you declassify JFK files? Yeah. Would I you, did. I did a lot of it. Would you declassify the Epstein files? Yeah, yeah, I would. All right. I guess I would. I think that less so because, you know. (laughs) The other two. Yeah, 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 I already did. What about the Epstein files? Yeah. Let's hear it again. Less so. Yeah, I would. All right. I guess I would. Yeah. Files. Files. I did a lot of it. Would you declassify the Epstein files? Yeah, yeah, I would. All right. I guess I would. I think that less so because, you know, you don't know. It. You don't want to affect people's no. lives if it's phony stuff. And right, 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 right. That whole right, right. world. Uh, but course. I think I would. Of course, of course, of course you would. I'm sure you would. But you don't want to hurt people who there might be fake information about. So you're not going to release anything about you, even though we've had 69 times you mentioned on one of those leaked files, but mm, was it 69 times? I believe it was. We just covered this. Uh, name featured 69 times in the release files. Yeah, I, you know, you don't want to hurt people who there might be false information about <coughs> me. <coughs> True information. <coughs> no, you wouldn't want that. That would be terrible. That would be terrible. Um, so I don't think we're going to hear about this for a while. Unfortunately, um, I wonder if it will. Uh, I wonder if it will come up again. Presumably, at some point, somebody will bring it up again. You would hope so, wouldn't you? Good old Trumpy, Trumpy, Trumpy. Um, anyway, uh, they shouldn't have tried to shoot him. Obviously, that was really bad. Uh, you shouldn't assassinate your political rivals you should beat them in a democratic way unfortunately they have made him a king they have made him a king haven't they they have made him a king haven't they have they i think they have they've made him a king have they made him a king i think they've made him a king not like the king we just saw watching bring in parliament. Not like that kind of king. No, an American king, which is actually even more powerful. Because he doesn't have to sit there and read out what Keir Starmer and his cabinet have written, like our king does. He actually is now immune from prosecution if he's doing his official acts. Uh, what are official acts? You know. Stuff he has to do in his role as president. Have you defined what they are in your ruling? No. So there's a massive amount of leeway there. Yes. So, and he's immune from any prosecution on any of that. Yes. That sounds like a king. But more powerful than our king. Who isn't really a king. He just wears the stuff and walks around and takes pictures and flies around the world. Yeah, they got a real king. Well done, everybody. Well done. You got yourself a real king. <laughs> uh, so I wanted so I wanted to cover a bit of politics today on a stream. These these um I'm gonna I'm gonna keep them in the um, podcast feed, but uh, label them differently because. They're not true podcast episodes. I do have a real juicy, tasty, wonderful podcast episode coming up very soon. And you'll see that in your feed very shortly. Uh, In the meantime, take care of yourself. I love you. Goodbye.